Since we're finally all caught up, we can go back to live action now for these final two reviews of the day. So, back in full camera, got full display back there. Oh, I should point out that pumpkin right there. That one. That one. That one is going to be carved and have different things in it at some point this week. So, it's not going to stay plain, I promise you. That's just for right now. Well, that's it. Well, let's uh, talk about some more Castlevania because, uh, holy crap, I did not realize I was this far behind on the show. But you have two more reviews today, and these final two are in live action because now we're finally all caught up. So, what's up? What's happening? What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Interstitial Universe of Fan Animation, including Vampire Hunters Fighting Monsters of the Night, as well as TV and movies. I'm your host, Jason Small. Welcome back to Castlevania Thon. Let's talk about the next episode of Season 3. Season 3, Episode 5, A Seat of Civilization and Refinement. Yes, this episode's title is really about that long, and no, I have no idea why. Because unlike the last episodes, where it was each based on a quote from the characters, here it's just random. Oh well. So, let's talk about it. You guys know how it works by now. Synopsis, plot, final verdict, final thoughts. You know, you know the drill. So let's keep going, shall we? So, synopsis. Belmont and the Judge discover an ominous symbol. Saint Germain's treasure hunt is cut short, and Alucard's bond with Sumi and Taka continues to grow. Now for the plot. And this one is a little bit detailed, but it's not super detailed. Still, a lot happens, so we're going to talk about it. Pretty much the entirety of this episode takes place in Lindenthal, so we don't jump around too much, which is nice. So, this is the first episode where we don't have any part of the Carmilla plot in this episode. It's weird. This is like the only episode I've seen so far of this season that doesn't have any, anything, any appearance by Carmilla, Hector, Lenore, or any of them. This one's just focused on what's going on in Lindenfeld and a little thing at the end with Alucard and his new students. So let's talk about it. In Lindenfeld, Trevor notices ominous symbols throughout Lindenfeld. Even so, he continues to walk through the forest, where he stops at a pool of water. Trevor has an intense conversation with himself, when suddenly the judge appears. The judge is quickly becoming one of my favorite characters. I was thinking that this guy was going to be like an evil like an evil douchebag that just stabs Trevor and Sypha in the back, but no, he actually seems like a decent, well-meaning person. And he actually cares about his town, so... That actually got me to like him, so congratulations. It, it's a character that's not a piece of shit. I really hope that doesn't come back to bite me in the ass later. The judge recounts how he became the leader of Lindenfeld. At a young age, he left Lindenfeld with his family for the capital, where he rose in the court and did well enough that he was sent back to his hometown. The two men walk back to the town when the judge suddenly notices a symbol on the gate. While Trevor believes it's the actions of a child, the judge believes that someone else is responsible. Meanwhile, in the monastery, Saint Germain is reading through various notes and books. The church monks leave him alone, giving Saint Germain the perfect opportunity to snoop around, with a crystal later revealed to be made out of lithomancy in hand. Lithomancy, lithomancy, I don't know how to pronounce that, I'm sorry. The jewel leads him to the entrance of the basement. Just when he starts to descend the stairs, Silo appears warning Saint Germain to, toll, to stay where he is told. The aristocrat comes with the excuse that he was looking for somewhere to urinate. <laughs> Yes, this is how you do those jokes correctly, by the way. <laughs> However, Sala doesn't buy his lie. Nevertheless, the leader of the monks lets him go. Outside, S uh, Sypha spots Saint Germain and walks beside him, asking him why he's allowed in the monastery, and also reveals Saint Germain's secret that he's a magician. However, he would like for Sypha to keep this little detail to herself. Sypha suspects that something ominous is lurking around inside that church, prompting Saint Germain to reveal his interests in the church. He's searching for something occult in nature. Sypha notices a weird symbol on the wall, the same one that Trevor and the Judge spotted outside the town earlier. Saint Germain recognizes it and he's worried. It's the alchemical sign for Saturn and lead 
thus denoting transformation and redemption, and the scythe, time, and harvest. Trevor joins them, where Sypha introduces Saint Germain. However, the young Belmont isn't too friendly towards the magician, and he forces all three of them to go to the tavern. At the tavern, Saint Germain retells his days in the slums of Paris, when he invented a drink. Trevor interrupts him and goes to the point. What does Saint Germain know about the church? The aristocrat is in search of the infinite corridor. Not surprisingly, Trevor and Sypha actually know about this mysterious location, even though it's literally just revealed to us now. Saint Germain reveals that a long time ago, he lost someone very dear to him in the Infinite Corridor, and he's been looking for a way back ever since. There's a portal to the corridor under the Priory, and he will find it despite the dangers. And that's pretty much it for the Lindenfeld plot in this episode. Not a lot happens. And now, we finish off in the forest nearby Dracula's castle, where Alucard is training Sumi and Taka in the arts of the Blade. However, the vampire hunters can't get close to Alucard, thanks to his very long sword. Even so, it becomes a teachable moment, as Alucard shows the disadvantages of lighting a bloodsucker near inches from a human's throat. Nevertheless, the pair have a few tricks up their sleeve, and the training ends when they tackle Alucard to the ground, and they head back to the castle for lunch, where uh, Sumi rides on Alucard's back. It's a cute little friendship that's bonding between them, and I'm really enjoying watching it unfold. So, that's the episode. Um... Uh, Pretty much no action outside of the little training session at the end, but a lot of interesting build-up and a lot of fascinating lore additioning exposition. Yes, lore additioning is a word now. I call it a word. Deal with it. So, my final thoughts on the overall episode? It's another slower one that mainly focuses on Trevor and Sypha's investigation of the Priory, with some fun scenes with Alucard mentoring his friend sprinkled in, as well as the story of the Infinite Corridor. It's solid, but it's very much another setup episode. And because of that, I can't give it higher than a 7 out of 10 for the final verdict. It's still a very good episode, I still really enjoy it, and it is definitely essential for the season as it's adding more and more build-up. But it's nowhere close to the best of the season, and after a 9 out of 10 episode in the last one, it is a little bit disappointing. But knowing Castlevania, it's going to pick itself back up real quick, so... I'll see you guys next time when we talk about the next episode of the series, The Good Dream.